शारदे पाहिमा शंकर शारदे पाहिमा शंकर शारदे पाहिमा शंकर शारदे पाहिमा शंकर शारदे ஸ்ரீகுருமணியம் Let's start uh, the session with these invocations to Shri Sharadamba and Shingeri Acharyas. Sharadam Sharadam Bhojavadanam Vadanam Bhuje Sarvadam Sarvadam Smakam Sannidhim Sannidhim Kriya Ajnanam Janhavitittam Vidyatittam Vidyatittam Viveginam சர்வேஷாம் சுகம் தீர்த்தம் பாரதீ தீர்த்தம் ஆசிரியே வித்யானாம் வினய சம்பன்னம் வீதராகம் விதேகினாம் வந்தே வேதாந்த தத்வயம் விதுஷேகர பாரதி கஜானம் பூதகணாதிசேவிதம் கபித்தம்பூபலசாரபக்ஷிதம் உமாசுதம் சோகவிநாசகாரணம் நமாமி விக்னேஸ்வர பாதபங்கஜம் குருர்பிரம்மா குருர்விஷ்ணு குருர்தேவோ மகேஸ்வர குரு சாட் பரபிரம்மா தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீ குரவே நம சதாசிவசமாரம்பாம் சங்கராச்சாரிய மத்தியமாம் அஸ்மத் ஆச்சாரிய பர்யந்தாம் வந்தே குரு பரம்பராம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் 
ദേവകീ പരമാനന്ദം കൃഷ്ണം വന്ദേ ജഗദ്ഗുരും സർവമംഗള മാംഗല്യേ ശിവേ സർവാർത്ഥ സാധിക്കേ ശരണ്യേ ത്രയംബകേ ഗൗരി നാരായണീ നമോസ്തുതെ ഓം ശ്രീ മാത്രേ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ അന്നധായ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ വസുധായ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ സ ചാമര രമാവാണി സവ്യ ദക്ഷിണ സേവിതായ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ കടാക്ഷ കിങ്കരീഭൂത കമലാകോട്ടി സേവിതായ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ ശിവശക്തിയായിക്യരൂപിണ്യേ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ ലളിതാംബികായ നമഃ ഓം ശ്രീ 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 ശാന്താനന്ദവതൂത സദ്ഗുരവേ നമഃ ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം പരശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം പരശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം പരശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം പരശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം ശക്തി ഓം നമ പാർവതി പതയെ ഹര ഹര മഹാദേവ നമസ്കാരം ടു ഓൾ വെൽക്കം ടു സെഷൻ നമ്പർ നയൻ ഇൻ ദ സനാതന ധർമ്മ ലളിത സഹസ്രനാമം സീരീസ് അണ്ടർ ദ വന്ദേ വിദ്യാശങ്കരം പ്രോഗ്രാം ഓഫ് എസ് പി ബി എഫ് നോർത്ത് ഇൻ അവർ ലാസ്റ്റ് സെഷൻ നമ്പർ എയ്റ്റ് വി ഹാഡ് കംപ്ലീറ്റഡ് അപ് ടു ശ്ലോകം നയൻറ്റി ത്രീ and up to 441 namas we also talked about a few things related to sanatana dharma the significance of makar sankranti panchangam and the ancient wisdom of our ancestors and astronomy as we go along i will touch on some of these topics on sanatana dharma which are very closely related to our culture and tradition we covered last session 69 namas of divine mother who is always a source of inspiration and motivation for all of us in today's session we will start from shlokam 94 as usual after the dhyana slogan so let me switch on the uh, screen for you i'll share the screen here we are you can recite the dhyana slogan along with me സിന്ധൂരാർണ വിഗ്രഹം ത്രിനയന മാണിക്ക മൗണ്ടീശ്വരത് താരാനായക ശേഖരാം സ്മിതമുഖീ മാഭീന വക്ഷോരുഹാം പാണിഭ്യാം മലിപൂർണ രക്തസകം സക്തോത്ഭവം വിവ്രതിം സൗമ്യാം രത്നഗടസ്തരക്തചരണം ധ്യാഹേത് പരാമംബികാം അരുണാം കരുണാതരങ്കിതാക്ഷിം ദശപാശാങ്കുശപുഷ്പാണചാപാം ശാന്തമൂർത്തിസ്വർണുത്തി സ കുങ്കുമ വിലേപന മലികുചുംബികസ്തൂരികാം സമന്ത ഹസിതേക്ഷണം സതരചാപ പാശാങ്കുശാം അശേഷ ജനമോഹിനീം അരുണമാല്യഭൂഷാംബരാം ജപാകുസുമാസുരാം ജപവിതോ സ്മരേത് അംബികാം ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ കംപ്ലീഷൻ ഓഫ് അവർ ജാന ശ്ലോകം നോ ലെറ്റ് ഗോ ഓൺ ടു ദി ഫസ്റ്റ് ലൈറ്റ് വേർ വി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് ശ്ലോകം നയൻറ്റി ഫോർ as usual i will recite the slogan and then give you the meanings and my commentary kumar ganana damba dushti prushtit madir prithihi shanti swasti mati kantir nandini vignanashini once again 
How happy to have two wonderful children, isn't it? All world famous, universally famous. Mothers are always happy when the children are bright and then they are achieving fame. So Ambal is mother of both Kumara and Ganesha. In India, Sri Adi Shankara established six paths of worship, six was called Shanbadal Stavakam, Shaivism, Vaishnavism, Saktism, Shauram, Ganapatyam, and Kaumaram. Out of these six, Kaumaram is derived from Kumara, which refers to the worship of Kumara or Murga, as called by many in Tamil Nadu and South India. The strange thing about Kumara is what I'm going to tell you about today. Our God generally do not have a previous birth. Like our uh, human beings, they don't have previous janma or previous birth. But not many people know that Kumara or Skanda had a previous birth or a past janma. I want to share this very interesting story about Kumara's previous birth. This story is from a a scripture called Tripura Ragasyam. Tripura Ragasyam, it is described actually in the 37th chapter of Mahatmya Kanda of Tripura Ragasya. Now, this scripture is considered as one of the greatest works by even Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi of Tirumanamalai. It is a scripture which has expounded the Advaita philosophy in a great deal. It is said that Lord Vishnu himself incarnated on the earth as Dattatreya, the Lord of the Avadutas. In fact, my Guru comes from that lineage of Avadutas and taught this Ragasya to Parshurama. And later this work was written by Haritayana. It's also called as Haritayana Samhita. It contains 12,000 slokas in three sections, the Mahatmya Kanda, which is talking about the greatness of Devi, Yana Kanda, which is on wisdom, and Charya Kanda, which is section on conduct. So that is the greatness of this scripture. And this story, what I'm going to tell you is taken from that. It's also narrated by Kanchi Mahaparivar in one of the lectures. Now it starts actually from Brahma. Brahma conceived four sons from his mind, Manasika Putras, as they are called. Their names are Sanaka, Sanandana, Sanat, and Sanatana. All come Sana, Sana, Sana. They are all called Brahma's Manasika Putras. They were all great jnanis, great scholars who chose to remain celibate. And Sanat Kumar was known as Brahma Jnani one who has attained the knowledge of Brahman. One day, he had a strange dream, you know. He dreamt there was a war between Devas and Aturas. And he himself fought in the war as the Deva Senapati, the chief of Deva's army, and killed the Aturas. And when he woke up, he felt, you know, surprised. He said, how can I have a dream like this? I am a jnani, I am not uh, for any violence at all. And he did not know the meaning of this dream. So he went to his father, Brahma, and asked him what this dream meant. Brahma also, he thought over and he said, well, I am not able to see the meaning of it, but whatever it is, you are a Brahma jnani, whatever you think a dream will definitely come true. That's why we always say the words of great Yanis come true. And we, we will go and see, 
we people go and seek their blessings because whatever they say comes true such is the power of gnanis and later sanat kumar continued his deep meditation tapas and para brahmam and at that time parvati parameshwara they were going and then they visited his ashram they heard about him and then they went to visit his ashram and they were waiting to get his attention but sanat kumar was totally immersed in tapas he never bothered to notice that so parameshwara being the almighty god he was annoyed and he called out and asked sanat kumar how dare you ignore me and parvati we are waiting to see you and you are not even looking at us what if i curse you for your indifference and sanat kumar he was not even moved he was least scared he challenged shiva boldly you can curse me you are an angry rudra you can curse me but your curse won't affect my atma at all try it out if you want to so parameshwara instead of getting angry he felt very happy is somebody to challenge me and he realized sanat kumar was a true gnani so he said i really appreciate your gnanam you ask me any boon i will give it to you and sanat kumar he replied very boldly i don't need any boon i oru varam vanda but on the other hand if you need any boon let me know i will give it to you see how bold sanat kumar was to ask parameshwara parameshwara said okay i am going to ask you a boon the boon is please become my son in your next birth and sanat kumar said so be it because he promised that he will give him but only put one condition that he will not be born to garbhavasa it has to be some other way of being born as a son to parmeshwar arpa so in the next birth sanat kumar was born as parvati parmeshwara son in a very unique way from parmeshwara's third eye six sparks of fire flew out and lodged in a pond what was called saravana poihai shara vanam means it's a forest of reeds you know all wild grass shara vanam and there was a pond which was actually formed when parvati could not bear the separation from shiva out of his tapas and she melted herself as a pond and these sparks went and lodged inside the pond and the six sparks became six babies that were united together as one body and having six heads what became arumugam or six faces or skanda he is also called sharavanan because he was born in the sharavanam many people have the name sharavanan or murugan who later on preached pranava upadesham to his father parmeshwara because sanat kumar was such a great brahmagyani being born as sharavanan he had the pr- pr- pranav upadesham to his father so that is the story interesting story about kumara of course we all know about ganesha i don't want to tell you he is the first one to be worshiped before starting any ritual he is the leader of the ganas the army chieftain of shiva hence he is called gananatha so ganesha is to be remembered as a remover of all obstacles and is invoked before all undertakings now apart from the story baskaraya gives other interpretation very interesting kumara gananada ba he is splitting into ku which means inferior in margana he is in aggregate of vikara ideas or passionate ideas and nathas means the lords of the above so ambal she is the binder or destroyer of all inferior ideas so that is the interpretation given by bhaskar raya kumara gananandha was split into ku margana and nathas and is giving another interpretation kumara means ahankara egoism whose deity is kumara 
and he is quoting Varaha Purana, which says, Vishnu is a person or Shiva by that name. Abhyakta is Uma or Lakshmi. Ahankara arises from the interaction of these two. This egoism is the Guha, Skanda, the leader of the army. And Ambal binds those who possess the qualities of egoism. So, that is the interpretation given by Bhaskar Raya. Now, let's go on to the other next seven names, you know. It is actually from 443 up to 449. Tushti, Pushti, Mati, Driti, Shanti, Swastibadi, Kanti. These are seven names which reflect seven different qualities of Ambal. So let us see what they mean. Each one. Tushtihi means contentment. You all know, those who are familiar with Devi Mahatmyam in Markande Purana, Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Tushtiru Upena Samchita Namastaste 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 Namo Namaha You see, Tushtiru Upena the goddess who resides as contentment in all beings. My worship to her. Namo Namaha. Namastaste, 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 Maha. That is quoted in Devi Mahatmyam. That Ambal is in the Rupam of contentment. Now, Vedas describe three kinds of doshas. Dosha Trayam, it's called. Three kinds of defects that are natural to human beings. The first one is called Dukkha Mistri Tattvam. It is mixed with pain and pleasure, you know. Never pure joy. You will have joy, but also you have uh, pain. So for example, you have a doctor, daughter, and uh, she is now graduated from college and uh, she is going to get married. You are very happy, but when she gets married and goes away to her husband's home, you feel sad because you feel the separation. After all, I have brought her up and she is leaving. So there is joy and also pain. It's called Dukkha Misri Tattvam. The second Tattvam is very relevant here. It is called Atripti Karatvam, which means never having satisfaction. Always wanting more and more and more. More money, better car, better furniture, a new home. No tripti, no end to struggle. They perpetuate. Rich man wants to become richer. One is not satisfied with one car, let's have one more. A woman wants more jewelry. We all see it every day, isn't it? The companies also use this trade to sell more and more goods. Every day we see in the television advertisement for more goods. Because people are not satisfied. The third one is called Banta Karatvam, which is a quality which binds you. Habit, like for example, smoking, drinking, gambling, these are all traits, you know, which bind a person. You cannot get out of it. So in these three doshas or defects, discontentment and consequent unhappiness is a common thread. Now, how can you overcome this dosha of atripti or dissatisfaction? Only by praying to Ambal, who counters atripti by being the goddess of contentment. She is tushti. Only when one is contented, real happiness comes. Those who worship Ambal, they learn to become contented and they overcome this dosha of Atripti. So that is the greatness of this name, Tushti. Let's go to the next name, Pushti. You know, Pushti, everybody understands nourishment. When you see a well-nourished, plump baby, you feel very happy. It plays and it laughs and, uh, you know, it's so nice. In fact, Kanji Perivas uh, says about Pulayar, you know, Pulayar should be plumpy. You like always plumpy children. So, Ambal provides nourishment to our devotees to be healthy. So, Bhaskaraya adds one more. He says, Pushti is a deity in 
devadaruvana it is actually a pine forest and a sacred place i don't know where it is but it is being quoted by baskar raya so that is pushti and we go to the third name called mati mati is this malayala also we see mati right mati means intelligence knowledge understanding perception and baskar raya explains mati is explained in the vayu purana as a purusha bearing the measuring rod and he understands division and thinks himself composed of different parts and is able to act so he is known as mati ambal is one who makes a person sharp smart sharpen his intellect and makes him what he call a mati man one who has got knowledge and intelligence the fourth name is driti driti is courage fortitude so ambal provides courage as dhairya lakshmi i want going to share you a story which my guru used to often tell me very favorite story of him which was an inspiration to me too he said there was a man who prayed ambal very sincerely for a long time and he got the blessings from ambal in the form of ashta lakshmis so blessed him with health well children everything that he wanted so he was very happy he had all ashta lakshmis blessing him and gave him everything he wanted so after some time so danya lakshmi came and said that now you got all the grains food everything i'd like to go back he said okay go back next came santana lakshmi she said i you got blessed with good children now i'd like to leave and he said okay go slowly one by one each lakshmi took leave of him and they went away the last to come was dhairya lakshmi she said uh, now everybody is gone i am also want to go he said no nothing doing you cannot leave me she asked why because if i let you go i will be totally devastated without courage what will i do i knew you i always want you to remain with me you will not go anywhere so dhairya lakshmi stayed and seeing her the other lakshmi automatically came back to him and he felt very happy so my guru used to say one should never ever leave dhairya lakshmi or courage by reciting lalita sahasra naam this particular name dhriti you develop courage to face challenges in life and one should never ever leave courage so this is one name which is representing that baskaraya is adding one more that this is a deity called dhriti which is worshiped in the pindaraka place actually it finds a mention as one of the shakti pitas in devi bhagavata purana now i believe it's a very sacred place uh, is situated near dwaraka in saurashtra in india so there is a place there is also uh, a deity worshiped there so next name which is the fifth name become is shanti shanti everybody knows is peace devi confers peace on her devotees baskaraya he quotes sai bhagama he says that which gives place to a man who is struggling with the flood impurity illusion and change that kala which gives him which makes him face it is called shanti that is the abode which is the seat of dominion you know tagaraj swami sings that song shanta mule ka saukya mule tu shanta mule ka saukya mule tu daraga sama if there is no peace there is no happiness where there is peace there is happiness 
but not the other way around. You may be happy, but not really peaceful. You know, you can buy the most expensive bed and be comfortable reclining on that one. But it still doesn't guarantee you peaceful sleep. You may be happy that I bought the most expensive bed, but there is no peace. So one may be happy with material comforts, but still not have the peace of mind, which it is true in case of many wealthy people, they have all the material comforts, but yet don't have Shanti in their mind. So in Sanatana Dharma, Shanti has got a very special significance. We say it three times, isn't it? Before and after many rituals. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. To remove all the obstacles. Adi Bhautika, Adi Daivika, Adi Atmika. The physical, divine and internal causes. So we pray. So, Ambal is in the form of Shanti. She gives you the peace. Swasti Mati, the next name. Ever true. Su means exceedingly. Asti is meaning what is having being a supreme reality. Swasti also means immortality. This is a, a name. Swasti Mati. Always true and always immortal. Then the next name is Kanti. Kanti means effulgent, which means having a divine luster, you know, something which is bright. Ambal in Nalay Parshiva temple in Trinavali is called Kanti Mati. Many people, many girls in the neighborhood have their name as Kanti Mati. In fact, this name Kantivati is going to come later in Velta uh, Sadaram. We'll explain more about it. So you have these seven names which tell you the seven qualities of Ambal. So that is the great thing about it, you see. Now we have concluded seven namas with Dhikta Ambal's qualities. Let's now start with other names having very special significance. The next name is Nandini. So there are different interpretations to this name Nandini. The first one which I am going to give you is, it means the daughter of Nanda. Who is Nanda? Nanda refers to Nanda Kopa. You know the story that Krishna was born in the prison and Krishna's father Father Vasudeva carried the baby Krishna across the Yamuna River to the home of Nandukopa in Kokal, where a baby girl was born to Yashoda. So Vasudeva left Krishna there in Nandukopa's home and carried back the baby girl. And when Kamsa tried to kill this baby girl, she flew up as Mahamaya and she warned Kamsa that the child born to kill you is elsewhere. So Ambal here was born as Mahamaya to Nanda Gopal. That's why she is called Nandini. So that is one interpretation. And uh, the meaning, Sanskrit meaning is Nand is the root here. Nand means to rejoice, to, to delight, or like Anandam, you get Anandam is an extension of Nanda, means joy. So here, Nanda Gopal is, means one who brings joy. And Nandini also means one who brings joy. And it's a female gender, a woman who brings joy. A daughter especially, whose name Nandini brings joy to the family. And you have this famous Mahishasura Madhani Stotram of Adi Shankara. The very first line mentioned about Nandini as the daughter of Shivavan. Ayigiri Nandini Nandita Medini Vishva Vinodini Nandi Tute Kirivara Vinda Shirodi Nivasini Vishnu Vilasini Jeshnu Nute 
ಭಗವತಿ ಹೇ ಶಿತಿ ಕಂಠ ಕುಡುಂಬಿನಿ ಭೂರಿ ಕುಡುಂಬಿನಿ ಭೂರಿ ಕೃತೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಮಹಿಷಾಸುರ ಮರ್ತಿ ಸಮ್ಯಗ ಪರ್ತಿನಿ ಶೈಲ ಸುತೆ ಹಿಯರ್ ಗಿರಿ ನಂದಿನಿ ಇಸ್ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಡಾಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೌಂಟನ್ ಹಿಮಾಲಯಾಸ್ ಹಿಮವನ್ ಭಾಸ್ಕರಾಯ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೇಷನ್ ನಂದಿನಿ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ to the daughter of kamadenu you know the celestial cow we choose to give whatever we want kamadenu so nandini being the daughter of kamadenu she inherited her mother's qualities and she used to give anything that people wanted and indra had gifted nandini to vasishta maharishi once the king kaushika who became later on vishwamitra he visited vasishtha's ashram with his army the army was hungry so he prayed to the rishi can you provide food for all of us so he said no problem he called nandini and said give food to all these people and nandini gave food to all, everybody now kaushika the king he was very impressed she said this cow should be with me what is this rishi going to do is only one man i got so many people so he asked vasishta give it to me so vasishta declined is i can't give you this is my property and she will be in this ashram she is giving me milk and other stuff then he applied force he said i am going to take this cow by force but you know vasishta was a brahma rishi and he applied his celestial powers divine powers and the cow refused to go and then the king he was not able to win nandini so later he became frustrated he said i am going to give up all my possessions and luxury and i am going to become a brahma rishi like uh, vasishta i will acquire all the powers so he performed penance and then became vishwamitra and he led the life of a simple rishi so this is a story about uh, nandini the cow and uh, there is one more story which i want to say about uh, the celestial powers of nandini it is in the raghuvamsha of kalidasa there was a king philipan who had no children so he went and saw vasishta he and his wife sudakshina they asked vasishta we want to have children how can we do this he said you serve this nandini cow because you had some in your previous birth you hurt a cow you can serve this nandini and then you will be blessed so they relinquished the kingdom and came to the ashram and they served nandini and they were blessed to have a wonderful son whom nurse named ragu this way ragu vamsham starts ragu was the ruler of the vishwaku dynasty his son was aja and aja's son was king dasaratha who was the father of lord rama so rama is the part of ragu vamsha the renians so that is how nandini the cow blessed the uh, great king dilipan and who started the ragu vamsha so like nandini ambal fulfills the desires of all her devotees without any limit you can ask for it then you will be blessed so that is the meaning of nandini and now we come to the last name on this slokam of bigna nasini which is destroyer of all obstacles i am not elaborating on this but it is very simple okay let's go to the next one tejovati trinayana dolakshi kamarupini malini hamsini mata balaya chalavasini tejovati devi full of tejas brightness because she is the support of the sun and other luminaries vaskaraya quotes uh, the bhratarane upanishad it says in this indestructible brahman the sun and moon were established so devi is a tejobati because she is supporting sun and other bright objects of the planets three nayana very simple to understand three eyes what are those three eyes the sun and the moon and 
Agni, the fire. Bhaskaraya gives different interpretations. We are not mentioning all of them, just a few of them. He says Trinayana is another name for the word Vaushat. You know, when you do Nasam, you touch the various parts of the body. You say Netra Taya Aushat. You know, you keep the three fingers here like this. The index finger touches the right eye, ring finger touches the left eye, middle finger touches the third eye. That is for igniting the power of divine vision, activating the third eye center. So, Bhaskaraya has three, is three paths, south, north, and the path of Brahman, Naya to lead. She leads those who are entitled to have one of the three paths. The Devi Purana says there are southern and northern worlds on the supreme abode of Brahman. And Devi leads those who follow the right way. So she is called Tri Nayana. Next one is Dolakshi Kamarupini. She is in the form of the desire of women. The Bhaskaraya comments to show her love is not limited to Shiva alone. Ambar spreads it all across and hence is called Kama Rupini. She is the form of Yogeshwari, who is the deity of desire. He is quoting Varaha Purana, which says, Desire, anger, greed, passion, bewilderment, envy, calumny, scorn, these are the eight mothers. So you should recognize desire as Yogeshwari, anger as Maheshwari, Greed as Vaishnavi and so on. And these are all mentioned in the Paraha Purana. So, Ambal is thus included as one who is desire and called Yogeshwari. Next is Malini. Malini, Bala is garland. Malini is one who wears garlands. Malini. Bhaskaraya says is the name of a deity of 51 letters. He also gives another interpretation that Malini is a companion of Devi, which is mentioned in the Vamana Purana, which is on the section of Parvati's marriage ceremony. And Malini, as a companion of Devi, she held on to the foot of Hara, or Shiva, and wouldn't leave it. So Hara said, Whatever you ask, I will give you. Please release my foot. And Malini then replied to Shiva, O oh Shiva, bestow your prosperity on my friend Parvati. And then I, you will be released. Then Shiva said, Okay, I have already granted that. Please release me and let go. So that is a story in Vamana Purana, which uh, Bhaskara is quoting. And he's also saying that Malini is a certain meter you know, the Chandas like, or in the name of Ganga, or a woman of the florist caste. So that is a, another interpretation, which is given Malini. Then she goes to the next one, Hamsini, beautiful. Hamsa means swan, you know, it refers to swan. Now, swan is a water bird which is worshipped in Sanatana Dharma. Now you see Hamsa is in the Sringeri tradition. You see the picture here on the right side. You'll also find the logo if you open the website of SBF North or Sringeri Matam. You'll find the circular logo with Hamsa Pakshi. What does it mean? Why is Hamsa so sacred? You know, the explanation is given by Jagat Guru Sri Sankracharya of Sringeri himself. It is in the Tattva Logo magazine of Sringari Mir, May 2016 issue. He says, Hamsa is a bird of elegance, its beauty and purity. And she is compared to a very saintly person who is not attached to any worldly desires. Just as the Hamsa's feathers don't get wet in water. It is also known that Hamsa Pakshi can separate water from milk. That's his greatness. The same way a Paramahamsa Jnani separates the superimposed false Jagat 
from real Brahman and immerses himself in the real. Only jnanis are capable of doing this, who can differentiate between a real rope and a superimposed snake. It is because of this ability that Hamsa symbolizes a Paramahamsa jnani. All the Jagat Gurus, Adani, Sringari, Sarada, Bhitam, have been great Brahma Jnanis. So, traditionally, the Hamsa symbol is attributed to the Sringeri Pitam. The presiding deity of Sringeri Mata itself is Devi Sarada, who is Brahma Vidya Sarupani, the goddess of knowledge, Saraswati. She herself is seated on the swan. That's why she is referred to as Hamsa Vahini, one who has Hamsa as a vehicle. So, the bird symbolizes Sattva Guna and it is therefore adopted as the logo. As I said, it symbolizes Paramahamsa. Ramakrishna mission too has him as a symbol. And if you notice, there are words underneath. Tanno Hamsa Prajotayat. May the Paramatman, the Supreme Self, symbolized by the swan, awaken our understanding. So Hamsini is one of the most revered names for Ambar. Let me also say that this magazine Tattvaloka is published by Sringeri Sarada Pitam, I think since 1978. What it means, Tattva is truth and Aloka is splendor. So Tattvaloka, Aloka, is a splendor of truth. You must read this magazine because it promotes Indian Vedic knowledge and wisdom. Next name is Mata. It's very common. Everybody knows it, which is mother. In fact, the words mom, ma, amma, mother, everything came from Mata. English also is a mother, right? She is the mother of all mantras and she is called Matrika. Malayachala Vasini residing in the Malaya mountain. In Kerala, you have got this Malaya mountain. That's why it's called Malayalam. Language there is Malayalam. And uh, Malaya mountains are home to Bhagavati. Bhagavati is a very common name in Kerala. It is, therefore, Ambal is known as Malayachala Vasini. The other interpretation is Ambal resides in the Himalaya mountains, being the daughter of Himavan, and therefore you call her Malaya Chalavasani. In Lalita Sastranamam, we see other names like Vindya Vasani, Uma, Sailendra, Tanaya, and so on. So that is concluding this slogan 95. Let's move on to 96. Sumaki Nalini Subruhu. Sobana Suranayika Kalakanti Kantibadi Chobini Swarupini. Su so is always a prefix, you know, in Sanskrit, which represents good. Suswagatam. Sumitra, good friend. Subhashini, good speaker. Suhasini, one who smiles nicely. Here Sumuku means one who has a beautiful face. So you'll find many more such words with su as prefix. And as you say, face is the index of mind. When you have a nice mind, the face is also beautiful. By wisdom, the beauty of the face increases. The Sruti say, one who knows this, his face shines. You can identify a Brahma with a sage whose face is shining. So Sumaki, is a bright face. Sumaki is also a deity which is to be worshipped as a part of Sodasi Mantra. Nalini, next name. Nalini refers to lotus, which is always the rubber flower in Dharma. I think we explained it before. I'm going to explain it later on also about lotus. Devi is like the lotus. She is, in fact, seated on Padmasana. Her hands, feet, face, eyes, Everything is as gentle as a lotus. Subruhu, next word, again, su as prefix. It means beautiful eyebrows. Bruhu is, bruhu is 
the eyebrows. You see similarity between the word bruhu and English word bro. There is some kind of similarity, bruhu and bro. So it's a beautiful eyebrows, subruhu. Ambal has beautiful eyebrows. Shobana. Shobana is again beautiful, baby, handsome. Sura Nayaka. Sura refers to Devas. Nayaka means one who is a leader. She is a leader of the Devas. Kala Kanti. Kala means back, you know, and Kanta is neck. She is wife of Kala Kanta. Who is Kala Kanta? Shiva has got black throat because it was colored by poison. So, as wife of Kalakanta, she is called Kalakanti. According to Devi Purana, in fact, uh, Bhaskara adds this, there are 68 sacred places. The one place was Kalanjara, where there is a deity called Kalakanta. This is actually a, a place in Bundelkhand in Uttar Pradesh. The Shiva temple here is a Swayambhu Linga, one of the sacred lingas, and the presiding deity of this place, Kalanjara, is called as Nilakanta, Kalakanta. There is also a story in the Linga Purana that in order to kill the Daitya Daruka, Shiva created Kali as well as Kabartini and Kalakanti. So that is the story of. Uh, Kalakanti. And next is Kantimati. We, I told you about Kanti, but this is Kantimati, which is referring to a person who is radiant. Kantimati is a radiant deity in Tirunelveli in South India, Tamil Nadu. There are five places where Lord Shiva is said to have danced. All these places are called Sabhas, assemblies or Ambalams. Shiva is also called Ambalavana. These five places are, one is Chidambaram, which is called Ponnambalam or Kanaka Sabha. It's a golden hall. Two is Madurai, called Veldi Ambalam, which is silver hall. The third one is called Ratana Sabha in Tiruvalangad, which is a gem hall. The fourth one is Tirunal Veli, is called Tavara Sabha, which is a copper hall. And lastly, the fifth one, is called Chitra Sabai, which is the Kutralam, again in Tamil Nadu. Chitra means picture. Now, Tirunal Veli is said to be the Tamare or Kapar Ambalam, and the Shiva there is called Nelli Appar. Nellai Appar, sorry, Nellai Appar. And his consort is Kantimati. Now, this Kantimati is a very nice name. Muthu Samadishar has composed a very rare Kriti. In praise of Kantimati. Sri Kantimati Sankara Yuvati Sri Kantimati Sankara Yuvati Sri Guru Gajananim Vande Sri Kanti Bhakti Shankara Yuvati. It's a beautiful rare Kriti in the Raga Hemavati. Praying before Goddess Kanti Bhakti. The young Yuvati means young. Young what? Young bride of Sankara. And who is the mother? Janani Ma Guruguha. So, this song is in praise of Kantimati. What is in the name? A lot, particularly in India. In India, we have the wonderful system of naming children after local deities or local villages or occupation. If you come across anyone with the name Kantimati, you can almost be sure that she has her origins in the Tirunelveli area. Like you have Sankaran or Sankaranarayanan or Gomati, these are all named from the Trinilveri region. In Maharashtra, for example, many Marathi names have the suffix kar. This kar usually 
denotes the village the person belongs to. You know, the late uh, singer, great singer Lata Mangeshkar, very famous Mangeshkar, come from a village called Mangesh in Goa. Mangeshkar refers to someone who belongs to that. Gavaskar refers to someone with the origin Gavaswadi village in Kolapur district. You have also names like Divekar, one who makes lambs, Deshmukh, who is uh, head of a state, Kable, who deals in blankets. In North India and Punjab, Sikh names are also inspired by virtues or qualities, like Harbhajan Singh, one who sings bhajans, Guru Charan Singh, one who is at the feet of the Guru, Devinder Singh, who is like Indra, Paramjit Singh, only supremely victorious. So you have many Sikh names also which are inspired by qualities. So we had each region very interesting system where a name meant something. Of course, this system is now changing to exotic short names, you know, like Lulu, Chiku, Dolly, and so on, that they really have no meaning, but they are only convenient to say. So that's the greatness of names in India, and Kantimiti is one such name. Shobini is the next name, one who causes emotion or excitement. Bhaskaraya says, by the agitation of our mind, Ambal created multitudes of deities. The Varaha Purana says, that Vaishnavi, the wife of Vishnu, once went to Mandara mountain to perform tapas. And she became very excited. And from that excitement, playing a lot of women of fair appearance. And these millions of such women arose with different faces by the agitation of Ambar's mind. So Chobani is one who causes just emotional excitement. That's the interpretation given by Bhaskar Raya. Sushma Rupine, the last name in this verse, Devi is subtle. Sushma means very subtle. You know, the uh, Kato Binish says, Anor Aniyan Mahato Mahiya Na Atmasya Jantor Nigato Guhayam Ano. Ano is the autumn. Aniyan, more subtle. Mahato Mahiya, greater than greatest. More than more minute than an atom, subtler than the subtle, greater than the great, is the Atman. We have said this before that Devi has three forms physical, subtle, and supreme one. This refers to the subtle one. Let's go to the next one. Next verse is Vajreshwari Va Madevi Vayo Abhastha Vivarjita Siddheshwari Siddha Vidya Siddha Mata Yasaswini. Vajreshwari, Vajra, the Sanskrit word which is diamond or thunderbolt, it's a flash of lightning. You know, it causes a thunderbolt carries high voltage electricity. It's so powerful it can break buildings and set them on fire. We have so many of fires caused by lightning. That's why we have special lightning protection in buildings. But what it conveys is strength and indestructibility. Ambal herself is described as lightning. In Malta Sasnam, you have another verse, you know, Tadillada Samarajai Satchakropari Samsita. Tadillada is, she is beautiful like a flash of lightning. So that is where it is, uh, Ambal's strength comes as, uh, as Tadillada, Vajreshwari, being very strong. Bhaskaraya gives other interpretations. He says, Devi herself gave Indra the weapon called Vajra, Vajraitam, you know. The Brahmanda Purana says, when Indra performed penance in the water, when the water arose, Devi and gave Indra the weapon called Vajra. So she is called Vajreshwari. So Vajreshwari is also a town very near Mumbai. It is, uh, I visited it years back. It has a Vajreshwari temple. And there are many hot water springs there. They are called Surya Kund, Chandra Kund, 
Agni Kund, like three Nayana, you know, each spring giving a different temperature of water. So Vajreshwari represents the strength, the absolute strength of Devi. Vama Devi, Vama Devi, the wife of Vama Deva. Again, Bhaskar Rava gives different meanings. Vama Deva is one of the five forms of Shiva, which is described in the Shiva Purana. It says Shiva of beautiful appearance. He is red as Kunkuma. The north face of the Lord is called Vama. It is called Vama Deva. It also has another meaning. Vama means by left side. No, Ardhanarishvara Swarupam, you know, it's got half body Shiva and the other half of Devi is on the left side, Vama Bhaga. And hence he's called Vama Deva. Or Vama, Vama Deva is to Vama to be worshipped and Deva is the deity. So he says, the Devas say he's indeed worshipped by all of us, hence it's called Vama Deva. Vama also means fair. It means fair, Vama also means the fruits of actions and Devi is the presiding deity. It also means Vamachara. You know, we talked about it earlier, those to go to the left hand path. So it has different differentiation as Vama Devi. Vayo Avastha Vijartita. Vayas. You know, Vayas in Tamil also, you see in uh, Marathi also, see Vayas means the age. That Ambal is exempt from the different states of life. Age does not apply, apply to her. She is always eternal. She can't, you can't call her young or old. She is always eternal. Siddheshwari is the queen of Siddhas. Who are Siddhas? Siddha means one who is accomplished. There is a Siddheshwari temple in uh, uh, Kasi, Varanasi. There is also a Siddheshwari temple in uh, Dhaka, in uh, uh, East uh, Pakistan, East Banga, uh, in Bangladesh. And there is one in uh, Siddheshwari temple in Cholapur. Siddha Vidya is the next name, which is meaning the Panjadasi. Siddha Mata is mother of Siddhas. Yashaswini, famous. Esho means fame, right? Not only Devi is famous, but she also grants fame to devotees. In Argla Sotram, we pray Devi, isn't it? How do you say? Mahishasur Nirnasi Bhakta Nam Sukade Namaha Rupam Dehi Jayam Dehi Yesho Dehi Dusho Jahi. Isn't it? Oh, Devi, please give me beauty. Grant me beauty. Please grant me victory. Jayam Dehi. Yesho Dehi, please grant me fame and glory. Vishwa Jagi, destroy my enemies. Right? So, that is called Yasasvini. She gives you fame. Let's go to the next slogan, which is 98. Vishuddhi Chakra Niliya Rakta Varna Trilochana Katvangadi Prakarana Pada Naisaka Saman Vita Vishuddhi Chakra Niliya She is one who is residing in the Vishuddhi Chakra. Now, one of the distinctive and unique features of Sanatana Dharma is that we see divine present in all existence, living as well as non-being, non-living. It believes in the divinity of each and every living being. Aham Brahmasmi, you say. Deho Devaleha Proktapa Jeevo Deva Sanatanaha. It means our body, Deho Devaleha, our body is a temple. And life is enthroned inside as the Almighty, as Jivatma. Dvaita Sasanam describes the divine aspects of our body. You see on the right side the picture of various chakras. And Ambal is associated with all these chakras in the human body. What are chakras? They are points of energy which run along our spine. Now each of the chakras is associated with the body part and its proper functioning. These are all energy centers. It's described in various Sanskrit literature, in Upanishads, in Puranas, and a lot of tantric works. 
So from this Nama, which is actually Nama 475, 475, up to 534, 60 Namas are there. You will find the description about the chakras, the psychic centers. And each chakra or psychic center is presided over by a deity called Yogini. There are seven such Yoginis. You can see the seven chakras, the human going, the bottom one being Muladhara, and then yes, Swadishtana, Manipurabja, Anahata, Vishuddha, Agna, and Sagasrara. So Sagasrara is stopped. Sometimes it is not considered as the chakra. People say it's six chakras only, but for all purposes, you can see seven chakras. Now, the order in which the names follow the Lita Sahasranama is not really from this chakra to the crown chakra or the other way about. Each chakra is considered to be specially connected with one of the five elements like earth, water, fire, ether, and wine. It actually begins here with Vishuddhi chakra, which is connected with the throat. And then it goes to Ajna chakra and then ends up with Sahasrara. So, each chakra is representing a particular alphabet of Sanskrit. You know, Sanskrit has 50 alphabets that include 16 vowels. For example, the throat chakra, which the chakra is 16 lotus petals, which represent 16 vowels. There are totally 50 petals as one goes from the base, Muladhara to Agni chakra. The specific number of lotus is 4, 6, 10, 12, 16, and 2. And Sagasrara Chakra, which is the top, has got 1,000 petals. We talked about it in one of the sessions. It is associated with the innermost triangle of Sri Chakra, which is called the Bindu Mandala, or Ambal is called Bindu Mandala Vasini. So Divine Mother is known by different names connected with these chakras. We saw earlier a slogan which described Ambal as Sat Chakropari Samsita, she who resides in six chakras, this is excluding the Sahasrara. In one form, she has one face. In another form, she has two faces. And in one, she is red. In another one, she is in golden color. In one form, she likes payasam. And in another form, she likes ghee mixed with rice. Lalita Sahasranam describes all her forms and details. It starts here with Vishuddha Chakra. Now, what is Vishuddha Chakra? If you see the meaning, in Sanskrit, Vishuddha, it translates to Visha, which is impurity or poison. And Suddhi is purified. Chakra, of course, is a wheel. The wheel represents the flow of prana or the life force through the body from the root chakra to the crown chakra. It's a wheel. So it is a symbol of infinite cycle exchange of energy. The Vishuddhi Chakra is a center of physical and spiritual purification. It removes the poison. Where is it located? In the vicinity of the larynx, the throat. It's also called the throat chakra. Now the breath that flows through the throat is therefore this chakra plays a very big role in humans. I'm talking to you because of Vishuddhi chakra, because my throat is really able to talk. So it is able to Talk because the Vishuddhi Chakra is helping. It is associated with the element of ether, which is representing communication, authenticity. You know the yoga technique of pranayama? It is exerting a very strong influence in Vishuddhi Chakra. It improves a person's health and mind. Every chakra is set to have different number of lotus petals, and you will find more references in this later coming up like Anahatap Janalaya, Manipura Janalaya, and so on. So you have lotus as the main thing here, different number of lotus petals. Why lotus? Because lotus is a very sacred flower in Sanatana Dharma. You find Lakshmi standing on it, and the lotus appears from the navel of Mahavishnu. So is, Mahavishnu is called Padmanabha, and lotus is a symbol of purity. It is uh, a national flower of India. It is a perfect analogy for human condition. 
even when the roots are all in dirtiest waters, the lotus produces the most beautiful flower. And lotus leaf, as you know, is untouched by water. You put water, it, it is separate. It will not mix with it. And in fact, in Gita, there is a slogan about this, you know. Brahmanya adaya karmani sangam tattva karotyaha lippate na sapape na padma patra vimambasa. You know, this padma patra, lotus leaf. You should be like lotus leaf, which does not mix with water. It is a flower which resembles or represents divinity, beauty, and prosperity. Ambal is described as Tani Yasi, right? He is fine, delicate as fiber of lotus. So Vishuddhi Chakra has a lotus of 16 petals, Shodas Padma, and Ambal has an abode in this 16 petal lotus. So she is called here Vishuddhi Chakra Nilaya. And in each of these six chakras, you have divinities like Dakini, Rakini, and so on. You know, these uh, Yogini and Nyasa is there. There are seven deities who represent the seven chakras. The names begin with the syllables Dara, Laka, Sahaya. There Dakini, Rakini, Lakini, Kakini, Sakini, Hakini, and Yakini. These Yoginas, they, they are the Adhishthana Devata or of each chakra. And the seven Yoginis also represent the basic Datus in the body, like Dakinis for skin, Rakinis for blood, Lakini for muscles, Kakini for the fat, Sakini for the bones, Hakini for Bajja or the bone marrow and yakini for the sukram of the human body. So each of these yoginis are surrounded by parivara devadas, you know. They have many attributes. They are supported. They are all having different forms and they have individual and also collective powers. So the meditation is there on these different yoginis. And the mantras, the represent in the form of aksharas. What is akshara? Chara is one which is decaying. Akshara means one which is not decaying. It is a word means which doesn't decay. And hidden in each of them is the energy of a particular deity which remains latent when the mantra is pronounced accurately. That is why I always stress that Radhita Sasnamam should be un pronounced correctly. And the deity of the mantra, she gets awakened only if the sound creates right frequencies. It should be pronounced accurately with the right intention, intonation, and aspiration. Then only you get the full effort. Okay. Next we go to Raktavarna. Ambal is light red complexion. Trilochana. We talked about it earlier. Three eyes. She is the spouse of Shiva, so she is three light. Katpanga Adi Prakarana. Katpanga is a club, you know. Katpanga, you know, the word cut in English also is same. Cut means to cut. They are similar. Katpanga means katpa anga, means a part of the body cut. Here, Katpanga is a club. It's a club with a human skull at the end, you know. So, Katpanga, armed with Katpanga. Devi is armed with Katpanga, the club. Badanika Samanvita, having one face. Dakini Devi is just one face. So, going further to Slokam 99. Payasana Priya, Payasana Priya, Tvaksta Pasu Loka Bayankari, Amurdadi Mahasakti Samrata Dakini Shwari. Payasana Priya, she is very fond of payasam, sweet rice. Nutrition is important and everybody likes payasana. Very sattvic food. In Kerala, the pal payasam is a very favorite dish. It's a famous naivedyam 
at Sri Krishna temple in Ambalapura. The taste of this payasam, if you have tasted, is unbeatable. You must taste it. In North India, they call it as kheer, which came from cheer. Cheer is milk. In Sanskrit, it means milk. Cheer sagara, you say that. So from cheer came kheer. Twaksta. Twaksta refers to the skin. Abbal is a deity of the organ of touch. She who lives in the sensibility of the skin. The body, as I said, is an abode of gods. And Twaksta is referred to the skin. And uh, the Atma Bodha by Adi Sankaracharya describes different aspects of a personality. First becomes the physical body. It's called Stula Sariram or the gross body. The human body is again a combination of five great elements. Earth, fire, water, fire, air and space. The earth element is bones and muscles. The water element is blood. The air element is breath. The fire element is the heat. And the space element is the emptiness within. So we are all formed of Panchabhutam, as they call it. The Panchabhutam, which is a five great element, is also within you. Pasu Loka Bayankari. What is meant by Pasu? Pasu, common understanding is animal, right? Animals are ignorant. They don't have the sixth sense at all. But here actually, it refers to humans who are ignorant like animals. Pasuloka Bayankari means Ambal fills such ignorant people with fear. Bhaskaraya is adding, Pasus are those devoid of knowledge of Advaitam or non-duality. He is quoting Bharataranya Upanishad, which says, one who worships another deity, this deity is different, that deity is different, I am different. He knows not, he is like a pasu, he is like an animal. And fear comes from there, this kind of duality. That once you imagine yourself to be divine, such duality does not come. But on the other hand, if you are ignorant, then you have fear caused pasu loka bayakari. Amurdadi mahasakti samrata. It's surrounded by Amrita and other Shaktis. Amrita and others are 16 great Shaktis, each seated on each of the 16 petals of the Vishuddhi Chakra. So Dakini, the Supreme Rule is the center, Amrita to Akshara, other are the 16 petals. So that is why it's called Amrita Ati Mahasakti Samrita, surrounded by Amrita and other Shaktis. Dakini Shwari refers to the goddess of the south. It also refers to the very very famous uh, Dakshinas very Kali temple where Ramoshna Paramsa was attached. So, up to this name, the nine names, which are from 475 to 483, the attributes of Devi. Let's go to the next slide, which says, Anahadabja Nidaya Sama Bhavadanadvaya Damsho Dvala Akshamala Dira Rudira Samsita Anahadabja Nidaya And again Anahadabja Nidaya abiding in the Anahata Lotus in the heart the 12 petal lotus it's called Anahata Chakra the yogini named Rakini she resides there. So she is the Devi who is the deity for that particular chakra. And she has two faces. She is the 12 petal lotus. She is black colored and she has got protruding tusks, you know, Damsho Jwala. Tusks are black hair, black color. She has a trident, got a drum in her hands. And she is fond of very greasy food. She worshipped by warriors. So many characteristics relating to the Rakini Devi. So Anahata Janlaya refers to her as abiding in the Anahata Lokras. Shama Abha. Shama is black. Abha is called Kali because she is black. Vadana Dvaya, two-faced. Abha's name is also Rakini. 
see two faces. You see the picture there. She has two heads to represent the duality between one's internal landscape and the external environment. Damshro Jwala. Damshro refers to tusks or long teeth. The elephant has beautiful tusks. The wild boar is also varaham. It's called long teeth. Ujwa means shining. shining. Devi means shining tusks. Akshamala Didira. Akshamala. This Akshamala is a string made up of beads. Where each bead represents one letter of the 50 letters from A to Sha. A up to Sha. So it's called Akshamala. So there are 50 beads. And Ambal is wearing the Rakshamala. In fact, there is a Upanishad called Akshamalika Upanishad, which is a part of Rigveda. Rutira Samchita. Rudira means blood. She is residing the blood. Blood is an important element of body. And just as we saw Devi resides in skin, Devi is also in blood. Next slokam here. Kala Ratra Di Sakta Yoga Brita Snikto Dana Priya Kala Ratriya Di Sakto Yoga Brita Snikto Dana Priya Mahavirendra Varada Rakinyam Paswarupini Kala Ratriyadi Sakcho Gavrita. Ambal is attended by Shaktis, which includes Kala Ratri and others. There is certain Shakti called Kala Kala Ratri. The Shakti of Rudra is born from darkness, who went to the Blue Mountain. That Raudri, that Supreme Shakti, is called Kala Ratri. Explanation given by Bhaskar Raya. It's also Adi, Kala Ratri Adi, you know. It refers to all 12 Shaktis from Kala Ratri to Tamkari. One is each petal of Anahata. Snikto Dana Priya. Snikto Dana Priya I means Bal is very fond of greasy food. You know, cooked rice with ghee. We give this food for growing children. Food with some fat content is like ghee is always nutritious. And desi ghee is known to be a good source of protein. So Snikta Dana Priya, she is very fond of this. Maha Virendra Varada. She Virendra Varada. Varada means boon. And Ambal Grand boons to Mahavir means great warriors. V is many. Ira means excited, intoxicated. The meaning is Viras are those who are gifted with eloquence. In fact, in Tamil, they call them as Solvirargal, right? Indras mean those who know Brahman. Idam is one who realizes the self. I am three. The Sruti says he perceived and he is called Indra. Mahavirendra. So Mahavira is also referring to Prahlada. Vaskaraya says he is referring to Prahlada and Indra. The Lord of the Devas. Devi Pura Bhagavad Purana says that Indra and Prakrada praised Devi after their fight and she granted the moons and therefore she is called Mahavirendra Varada. Rakinyam Basarupini. She is assuming the form of the mother Rakini. Rakinyam he is said to be residing in the lotus of Tulpa. Okay, let's move on to the next verse. I think we are running out of time. Manipura, Dinalaya, Vadara, Tresam Yuta, Vajra, Dikai, Dopeta, Damar, Jadivira, Abrita. Manipura, Dinalaya. Again, one who abides in the Manipura lotus. Manipura is a ten petal lotus in the navel region. Now, here the yogini is called Lakini. You see the picture here, Lakini. Lakini has got three heads. She's on eight petal lotus, three faced, red colored, and she has a weapon, and she is attended by other shaktis, and she is fond of sweet meats and doing good to all. That is a meditation for Manipura Abdinilaya. 
Vadanatraya Samyuta, Vajanatraya Samyuta means three faced. Vajradikayudayopeta armed with Vajraidam, which we mentioned earlier, and other other weapons. Damar Yadibira Vrita Damari. Is Shakti. She is attended by Damari and other, which includes ten Shaktis from Damari to Patharini. Rakta Varna, next, next slogan, 103. Rakta Varna, Mam Tanishta, Gudana, Pritamanasa, Samastavakta, Sukhada, Lakinyam, Baswaru, Pini. Rakta Varna means blood colored. Mam Tanishta is means residing over flesh. Now, this is the Mamsa Nishta is a 500th Nama, which ends the sixth Kala called Ruchi in the Saubhagya Bhaskara, composed by the great Bhaskar Raya. In his commentary, Saubhagya Bhaskara, this is the 500th Nama. And he has divided the whole Saubhagya Bhaskara into 12 Kalas. This is the sixth Kala, so it's be right at the center. Next one is Gudana Pritamanasa. Very easy to understand. Good means jaggery. She is very fond of jaggery sweets. Samastabakta Sukhada. Sukhada is happiness. She confers happiness on all devotees. Lakinyam Basurupini. Assuming the palm of the mother. Lakini. Going further. I think this is probably the last slide we have. Swadishtana, Bujagada, Chadur Bhaktramano Hara, Sula Dayu, the Sampana, Pita Vanati Garpita. Swadishtana, Bujagada, presenting in these Swadishtana's lotus. The yogini here is called Kakini. You see the picture here. She is residing on six petal lotus. Now she has got four faces. And she has the trident, the nose, the skull, and other weapons. And she is fond of food mixed with curd, the Dhyona Priya. And she is called Kakini. Next is Chatur Vaktra Manohara. She is four faced and fascinating. Shula Dayata Sampanna. Shula means trident. Armed with trident other weapons. Pita Varna, yellow colored. Ati Garpita, very proud. Ati Garpita. Next one is 105. Vedo Nishta Madhuprita Baddinyati Samanbita Dadya Nasakta Kridaya Kakini Rupadarini. Vedo Nishta is presiding over of fat. Madhuprita is fond of Madhu, honey, need. The Sruti says one who presents an offering with honey pleases the great Devi. Bandhin Yadi Saman Pita. She is attended by Bandhini and other deities. Six deities there from Bandhini to Lamboshti. Dadya Nasak Takhrdaya. I told you, she is very fond of Dahi Bath. Food with rice mixed with curd. Very staple food in many South Indian homes in the past. I am not sure now, but maybe in some homes they still have this Dahi Bath. Kakini Rupadarini, assuming the form of Kakini. So with that, we have completed now 105 verses and 513 Namas. Today, we were able to cover 12 verses and 71 Namas. So with that, we are now coming to the end of session 9. Our next session 10 will be on Sunday, March 20th. So I'm going to conclude this session with prayers as usual. Sabha Mangala Mangalye Shive Sarvartha Sadike Saranye Trayambake Gauri Nara Jani Namusute Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Parashakti Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Parashakti Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Parashakti Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Para Shakti Om Shakti Om Shakti Om Om Shakti Pradab Paripal Yantam Jajin Amargyan Mahim Mahim Sa Go Brahma Nepusumas Sanityam Doka Samastas Tukhinobavantu 
Thank you so much. Namaskaram. Namaskaram. Thank you. Namaskaram. Amarumba. Thanks. Pramadam Marandiji. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank you, sir. It was very nice listening to you. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Now, the interpretations on uh, Kumara, Gananajan, and all those things are very, very interesting. Completely something that was new to me on that, completely on that. So, very, very nice to see the different interpretations done. How we break the words make a big difference. So it thank you so much. From different sources, and uh, uh, you know, I would like to engage people with stories because stories are always interesting, Correct. especially those Correct. you have not heard before. It makes uh, Lalita Sasmamam even more interesting for people. That's that's absolutely correct. Yes, and uh, that that those are very good. And also, uh, we always like your. Uh, Reference to the Carnatic music compositions of Kanti Matim and all those things. Like every yeah. every time, that's so nice. That's so different and interesting too. Thank you so much. Welcome. So any questions anybody else has, I think uh, Tim will take us through the final uh, uh, presentation. Any questions, please send the email out to lslectures at svbfnorth.org. And we'll continue you, with that. Today, especially, Mama, you talk, especially from the doctor perspective, you covered the anatomy and... Uh, how each of the umbal is a person, uh, you know, uh, placed on one of the body parts and everything. Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, that's very much relevant because our body itself is divine. As I said, it's a temple body and each chakra has its own centers, energy centers. And yoga specializes in activating those energy centers of, as to awakening the kundalini. It's a yoga sastra. Absolutely. Correct. So, thank you, Tim. Take it away. You can finish off. Yeah. You're on mute. Thank you, and we'll meet next month, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mangalam Guru Shri चंद्रमौलीश्वर के शक्ति गणपति शारदाम्बिगे शंकराचार्य के शक्ति गणपति महागणपति शारदाम्बिगे के काल भैरव के काली दुर्गा के वीर धीर शूर हनुम मारुति चरण तिरके मल्लिकार्जुन के चलव जनार्दन के अंबा भवानी कंबद गणपति चंडी चामुंडी के श्री कृष्ण भगवान के श्री चक्रवासी के सीता राम लक्ष्मण सहित मारुति चरण तिके विद्यारण्य के विद्याशंकर के बागीश्वर के वज्रदे गरुड आंचनेयर के श्रीवल्ली देव सेना समेत सुब्रमण्यर के तुंग बद्रै के श्रृंग निवासी के श्रृंगेरी पुरी नीलेकुम एंगल शारदाबिग के सच्चिदानंद शिव अभिनव नृसिंह भारती के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु सार्व भौमर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु विद्या तीर्थर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु भारती तीर्थर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु विदुशेखर भारती के मंगल गुरु श्री चंद्रमौलीश्वर के शक्ति गणपति शारदाबी शंकराचार्य के शक्ति गणपति महागणपति शारदाबी के 
சிங்கேரி புரியில் நிறைந்திருக்கும் எங்கள் சாரதாம்பிகைக்கே